buddy Mike Pfeiffer here. Um, I've been asked lately to try and do a video on how I make my control panels. Uh, so I have to make one for the new yard area I built, so I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to make one of these. And in a second here I'll give you kind of a close up of this one, which is also going to be redone. And I hope you enjoy this. Okay, here we are at my main panel, which is going to be redone. Uh, you'll notice if I get off to the side here, you can see that there's somewhat of a 3D effect, and that's due to the fact that I uh, glue square styrene to the top of the plexiglass sheet that I use to make the control panel out of. So let's get on to how these things are made. Okay, here we are. The first thing we need to do is we need to figure out exactly what our, our size is going to be of the control panel. In this particular case, it's about 14 and 3 quarters by about 7 and a half. Um, and what I did is I went to my Lowe's store or whoever you have that provides uh, plexiglass and I got a piece and used my table saw and basically cut this piece of plexiglass which has a protective backing on it. And you can see now that uh, it fits this area perfectly and it will be held in place with uh, sticky back Velcro. Uh, the sticky back Velcro that I put here, I also staple in place because it tends to pull off of the wood. It sticks pretty well to the back of the plexiglass, but that's all I use to uh, adhere this control panel. So let's get started. Okay, I start out with a uh, my piece of plexiglass, 3 16 of an inch thick. Uh, like I say, I bought it at Lowe's. Cut it on my uh, little table saw. You can scribe it and cut it, although that's kind of a pain in the neck. Uh, so basically this is my panel ready to go. Uh, what I normally do is I take and put regular graph paper together and make it the exact size that I need with the allowance for where your Velcro tape is going to be on the back that's going to hold uh, your panel to the wood that you saw in the earlier picture. And you can see that I've laid out the basic plan here, as well as the uh, adjoining holes, where the holes are going to be. The red holes indicate uh, the block sections, that I'll be able to just turn those sections on and off. The uncolored ones are going to be actually the turnout throws. And I'm moving now to um, some turnout controllers, as opposed to the Cato turnout controllers. I'm going to be using these... Uh, sub-miniature switches. They're momentary up. They're actually momentary up and momentary back to control the switch machines and I'll have to put a little X in between of wire that don't touch each other to reverse the polarity. I'll show you these a little more uh, later on. But this is pretty much what I'm going to wind up with starting out with and uh, I'm going to tape this up and I'm going to show you how I get started. Okay, what I'm doing here, and I've got most of it done already, is basically just cutting out my uh, my pattern, which is to size of my plexiglass, so that I can tape it to the back of the plexiglass. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some masking tape to the back side of my template leaving about a one inch overhang just so it wraps over the lip but doesn't get in my pattern. Now I'm going to place the plexiglass on top and what I do is I want to make sure I have the smooth edge because sometimes when you cut it with the uh, saw you get a little jagged edge on the back side here. And what I'm going to do is use the clean edge on the front. So I place it on my pattern. Make sure it's nice and squared up. And then basically all I do is fold the edges over.
not much to this just uh, I'm just trying to be a little bit careful with the tape because I want to get a nice I want to get the paper nice and solid to the back and of course it you can see it's upside down but that's okay right now now you can see that we have our pattern attached to the back side of our plexiglass and now we can uh, what I, the next thing I'm going to do is start drilling the holes. Uh, these circles, by the way, that I have drawn in here are allowing for the size of the nut on top of the uh, turnout control or the block control switches. All of the switches that I'm going to be putting in have a use a quarter inch hole for the sub-miniature switches. So what I'll do is I'll find the center of these and I'll drill a quarter inch hole. Not necessarily this size here. This is just so when I run the plastic along here and glue it on that I have room to put the nut. The nut will turn in that space. So let's get on with doing some drilling. Okay, what I like to do is I like to rig up my drill here uh, with a quarter inch bit. But also, just to be sure, I drill a couple pre-holes. Uh, I thought I had a quarter inch bit here and I didn't and it turns out that uh, this one is unmarked but it is a quarter inch and if you'll notice this one here fits a little loose I don't want that I'd, I'd rather have it fit nice and tight snug like this one just so it doesn't want to move around once you get it mounted the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some very small pilot holes so I can get the centers of all these holes here and then I'll be drilling my main hole Okay, you'll also note here that I like to put some uh, nice wood support backing behind my panel before I do the drilling. Uh, this will ensure that you don't push through and break the plexiglass. So let's get started. Okay, you can see that I'm using about a 16th inch bit here and I've already drilled uh, some of the pilot holes for the turnout controls and I'm just going to drill the remaining ones for the block controls here. It doesn't have to be extremely accurate as long as you make sure that you have enough space and I forgot to mention this earlier but you always want to make sure you have enough space that the switches fit without running into each other especially in these congested areas like here you want to make sure that the switch will go here, the switch will go here without hitting each other on the back of the board. So sometimes it requires moving a switch over or modifying the length of this diagram just a little bit to make certain that all of the uh, switches don't run into each other. So let's just drill a few more holes here. Okay, we have all of our uh, pre-holes drilled and now all we have to do is go up to the quarter inch size. Okay, I've already drilled some of my quarter inch holes here and all I'm going to do right now is just verify that they fit the switches. And you can see that if I push on them hard, they do go in. And you can see that they stick out just, just enough to get the nut on. So now that we've verified that the holes fit, we're going to do the rest of them. Uh, while I'm drilling these, you'll see that this bit gets kind of hot and it leaves a little lip here. But uh, don't worry about that too much because you can go back with the drill bit once it cools off and just run it through there real fast and it'll take that lip off or you can trim it off with a knife. But let's drill a few more holes. Okay, we've got all of our holes drilled. There is not going to be a need for a hole over here as this is going to be controlled. This is the section to the turntable. It's going to be controlled by a switch on the fascia where the control will be for the turntable itself. Um, and also, 
there's a section of track here that you can see that I didn't put a switch in. That's because this is a power routed turnout here, and I'm just going to leave it that way. This is already scenic, so I'm not going to tear that track up to um, put a feeder wire in there to actually be able to shut that off. And normally all that's going to be in there is cars. Locomotives will normally be parked here, and locomotives will normally be parked here, so I need a way to turn that off. But now you can see how the panel is kind of coming together. Uh, the next step will be to clean up the holes and uh, just start laying my uh, plastic around here. So let's get to that. Okay, now we're going to get into some of the products that I'm using to do this um, before we get started and actually gluing down. Uh, I'm, I haven't used this for this purpose yet, but uh, this is what we're going to use, uh, Plastruck Plastic Weld. It's a general purpose uh, plastic solvent. It should work on uh, plexiglass and the styrene. So we're going to give it a shot and see how it works. Um, I also recommend uh, your trusty X-Acto knife. I have an angled blade on this one, uh, which I prefer to use uh, simply because it's easier to get in there at an angle to cut your pieces off in the end. You can use a standard blade or you can use these chisel blades. It's really a matter of preference. Also I recommend uh, an A-West um, applicator bottle set. Uh, they come like this and it comes with several different tops. Uh, this happens to be one of the thinner ones. I don't know if it is the thinnest but it's the thinnest applicator. It's got a little microscopic hole there in the top. This will allow you to turn the product upside down and you can see how it barely comes out of there. And that's what we want for this application because we don't want to get it and smear it all over the board. We're just going to put it right along the edge of the plastic and you'll see how I do that when we get going here. Also, this is the size plastic we're going to be using. It's uh, HO scale um, evergreen scale models. Uh, 6 by 6 in HO, which is actually 0 .066 by 0 .066. You can use smaller. I actually have some 4 by 4. Uh, it's a little bit tinier if you're making a, a smaller control panel and more compact, you may want to use that. You can use larger than this. Uh, the smaller it is, the easier it bends. Um, and what I prefer to do, and you'll see when we get going here, is if I have to make a curve, I try and run this stuff between my fingers and get it bent approximately to the right shape before applying the glue because if you apply the glue and try and bend it it tends to break the styrene so I'll show you how to do that here in a few minutes but as far as supplies go that's all we need to get going okay we're gonna get started here I have a piece of my uh, evergreen um, here and I'm going to uh, first start off by laying a couple of straight pieces down, then we'll work on this curve over here, and I'll show you how that's done. Um, I'm hoping this will turn out without me getting my fat shoulders in the way here. We start out, and, re and keep in mind, remember we had said that we wanted to stay outside the larger hole so that our nut that we put on to hold the, um, the uh, switch in place does not interfere with the uh, styrene. If it does, and if you if we make a little error, don't worry about it because we can uh, we can snip that off uh, with a knife. It's not that critical. Uh, but first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get this held roughly in straight line here, and I'm going to come back here and get my applicator, and I'm just going to let a little bit of the adhesive dribble out. And let it flow. The only thing to be careful is, is don't get it under your fingers on top of the styrene. And you can see that it's it's already bonding. And once we're satisfied that it's pretty much uh, straight, which it appears to be, I'll go along and give it another shot just along the opposite side. just to be sure it holds. Okay, 
Um, this is the plastic, that we're, same plastic that we're going to use to make this little radius right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just bending it in my fingers. It's pretty pliable. Get it to a general bend. Doesn't have to be perfect. Then we're going to lay it down on the edge of our hole there. And remember, we said we have to leave room for the nut, so I'm going to leave a little bit of slack there. And we're just going to do the same process over again. Hold, I'm going to hold it there for a few seconds until the glue gets hold. Make sure the glue is holding. Go back again and do the same thing. Apply a bead to the other side and just let it sit for a few minutes. Now I'm going to take you over here. When they, we'll, we'll cut this off in a minute. And then I'm going to take you over here and we're going to do this large radius. Okay, you'll notice here that I uh, went ahead and straightened this out slightly and went ahead and completed this line, which is perfectly all right because we can still go back in and cut this afterwards, as I had said before. So if you have a continuous line and you want to go across the holes, that's perfectly fine because you're going to cut this out anyway, and it will come out of there. But let's work on this large radius now, and we'll show you how it's done. It's the same principle as with the small radius. I'm going to take and just run this through my fingers, bending it. And basically all you're doing is just adding heat to it and getting it to conform to at least a, a radius of some kind. You're, you're not too concerned with the proper radius. And I'm going to start right here at the end because that's where we need to go. And you can see that it takes a little bit of work and if you break it, that's fine. We we have a whole pack full here, so if it breaks, um, we can just get another piece and keep on going. It's really pretty tough to make a mistake doing this. I try and reach around my camera here and see if I can get us started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get one edge of it started before we actually bend it. So I'm just going to get it lined up here best I can. Put a little dab of glue on there. And we're going to let that sit for a couple of seconds. But you can see how we're going to arc this around here. All, and we're going to bring it all the way around back over to this, this turnout position right here. And we'll, we'll glue it around as we go. You can see there that it popped loose on me a little bit. So I'm going to give it a little push here. And I'm going to hold that with my fingertip. We're going to bring this radius on around. And I'm going to hold it with two fingers, hopefully. And we're going to apply a little bit of cement. I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then we'll be right back. Okay, I've applied that glue, and you can see that my end here got a little, got away from me a little bit before the glue actually dried. I have some glue on this, and I'm only doing part of the radius at a, at a time. And then we're going to make sure that that gets plenty solid before we just keep going around. Or at least make sure that this end is solid, because you I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but it slid on me just a little bit right there. And But once it dries, once it dries, it's going to be there. So we're just going to let this dry for a couple of seconds. I'm going to go ahead and continue around my radius here. And I'm just going to let it kind of go naturally. I'm going to hold it up here. Apply a little bit of glue. Now we're going to let it dry for a couple more minutes and continue on. Once your glue starts to set up a little bit, you can kind of run your finger around this and put putting pressure down. And it will actually uh, help that glue bond because it basically melts and welds that, the two surfaces together. So don't be afraid to apply a little pressure. You can see now that I can let go of it up here at the top and it's going to stay there. Now I'm going to just run it on around over here to the hole which has some material on it, so we're going to get rid of there. And we'll see how it turns out. 
I've noticed, uh, I had to stop here for a minute. I did notice one thing. Uh, now that I'm using this Plastruct weld, uh, it melts the styrene so quickly that as I'm putting it around there, if I let this thing, or when I when I take the glue away from it, it sucks just a small amount of styrene back into the hole. The A-West applicator comes with a little piece of wire, little tiny piece of wire that my eyes are having a hard time getting in here. But sometimes you have to stop and uh, insert this wire in the end of the tubing. And you can see, once I inserted it in there, you can see a droplet of glue there. It just gets clogged with just a tiniest minute amount of, uh, of styrene. So now we're going to continue on around the loop. Okay, you can see that I have this uh, pretty much held in the position that it'll be in. If you need to make any adjustments, you can. For at least from my vantage point, it looks okay. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue all the way around the radius and down to the end. There again, we're going to apply a little bit of pressure around there, help it seal against the plexi. And I realize that this part is a little bit time consuming, but uh, the end result will be well worth your effort. Now we pretty much have the big radius done. I'll cut this off. I'll do a couple more pieces of straight for you. And I think by that time you'll have the idea of how this portion of it is done. Okay, you'll notice right here, uh, we, we have a piece joining in where the turnout is going to be, and it's going to go up and through a couple of, uh, uh, well, a switch up there. I was just going to show you what we need to do right here where it joins to make a professional butt splice. Um, I'm going to take my piece of wood here, and I've already kind of pre-bent my end, and it doesn't have, there again, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? And I'm just going to cut an arbitrary angle on it that I think is close to what is what's on the uh, diagram. Now you can see what I wound up with there. It looks a little bit angled. Uh, I need to angle this cut inward a little bit just so we don't have a gap at the top. Now you can see what I wound up with here. A little arbitrary angle there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test fit that here. And it looks actually pretty good. If I make the bend a little bit sharper, it should fit right in there. And like I say, we don't have to follow the diagram exactly. The diagram is just a guide. But now you can see how this is going to blend right in. And we're going to take this piece right up the diagram here. Now, once this piece dries, we'll just make our cut down here. I'll show you that in just a second, and we'll we'll be off and running with our lead that goes that way. Okay, you can see now how I've uh, blended this angle in. And now all we need to do to get that ready for the, for the, uh, for the control switch is to just trim this end off. Now you see what I mean about cutting it in between. And then you can uh, use the knife blade as a scraper also to clean that area up. And that's pretty much on making a curve. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of the panel and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's completed and then we'll go on from there. Okay, and once uh, once I have it to this stage right here, uh, what I'll be doing is is take some 600 grit sandpaper on a block and basically go over the tops of the white portion. And then I'll use the same block or maybe a pad to scuff up the background here uh, just so the paint sticks to the, to the surface of this. Um, I also want to mention too 
that uh, now is the time, now that we have all of this on here, now is the time that this backing can be removed. So we're going to remove all this backing. Uh, one word is, if you, when you get this backing off, be careful taking it off and save your pattern. Because if you ever have to make a change to it or whatever, you already have it drawn out. All you have to do is cut another piece of plexiglass and omit or add whatever you want. It's pretty easy to add to this later. If I wanted to put a leg out here, all I really have to do is just take and scrape the paint and then just put a piece of plastic in there and just run the glue in there. And then just, if I use a spray can, just spray some of it into a spray can lid and then take a brush and just apply it along the edge and it'll touch up real nicely. You hardly even notice it. Uh, so they can be added onto. It's a little bit harder to subtract something because it usually leaves a mark that you can't get rid of. So in the event that you had to make another one, it's relatively inexpensive because you, you've already bought a large piece of plexiglass. If you hang on to that, you can just do another one. Um, I try and get everything figured out beforehand you know, make sure you're satisfied with the layout that you have and, and go with it. But anyway, save the pattern because uh, you may need it back down the road. Fold it up and put it in a folder with the papers of your layout build if you have some. Uh, so the next time I see you, this will all be painted and we'll go over what to do with the top portion and see about installing some switches into it. Bye for now. Okay, everybody, here's uh, here's the panel that I've sanded and it's now ready for paint. Uh, this is just uh, 600 grit that I bought at uh, Lowe's and I just basically fold it and go around in the cracks and do the whole surface and now it's ready to paint. So let's go get it painted and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay everybody, um, I've painted the panel and I've given it a day to dry. Um, here's basically what you wind up with. You can see that it's, uh, of course, I selected gray because that's the color of my fascia. Pretty much matches the fascia. You could select any color you want. It could be black or white, purple, whatever you want. Uh, I used a uh, spray can that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's just a gray accent paint. Uh, once I had sanded off in the last procedure, I used a tack rag to get all the uh, dust and stuff off. However, if I can if I can hold it here at an angle, you can see that I do have some flaws in it. Um, normally that doesn't happen, but I painted it outside and uh, the wind was blowing a little bit. But uh, when you stand back from it a little bit, you don't really uh, notice that, and it's not that critical. Uh, now I'm going to go into uh, showing you how to color the uh, the actual lines themselves. Okay, we're going to we're going to get started doing our our markers. You can see that I use a variety of different markers. This one happens to be by a company called Treehouse Studios. These are available at Hobby Lobby stores and uh they come in various colors. You can see that this one is light blue. <clears throat> They're kind of thin. Sometimes they take a couple of coats. Uh you can see that the retail price on them is 2.99. I don't know what I paid for them, but I bought about 10 or 15 different colors of this, but you can use them for all different kind of projects. Uh, this is your standard uh, acrylic testers marker, uh, also various colors, um, available almost anywhere. Uh, this is your testers gloss enamel marker, also available almost anywhere. Uh, I also carry the uh, Floquil um, uh, marker pens as well. Uh, they are a kind of a lacquer base and they're also flat so if you're looking for a gloss you're probably going to want to stick with something like this but you and you can even use a brush and regular paint you know on the top of this it's pretty easy to follow the lines once we have them on the board so let's get started okay you can see here that I got a little piece of paper what I want to do is make sure that this isn't too uh, too wet when I go to put it on and I'm just going to start with red because that happens to be the main line that's going to come off of the uh, main control panel on the other side of the room and will be the loop portion of what the diagram that you see here. So I'll just 
kind of do this real quickly and hopefully you can see how this works. Sometimes we need to get a little more paint on here. Sometimes we have too much and sometimes we don't have enough. So if you hold it down for just a few seconds, it'll recoat your your brush portion. And I'm only going to paint this one part way up because I'm going to, the block actually changes going into the turntable. But there you have it. I'll be back in a minute and show you how the rest of it turned out. Okay, I'm going to start with a little bit of blue. Um, basically, I'm just going to use blue just because it's. I selected it for the purpose that these are sidings that are going to be used for switching purposes in the future. Also, these are going to be engine yard, uh, engine storage tracks here. And I just want to differentiate them with a different color uh, just so that I know that that is their purpose. I mean, eventually I will get it through my head that that's what they're for. But for right now, it just gives the, some appeal to the um, to the panel. If I was doing a main control panel like my main control panel that I will be doing uh, over again here soon, uh, I might select different colors for different tracks as I did in the layout inside because I want the grandkids to be able to figure out what track they're on on the layout and what uh, Kato turnout controls uh, went with those particular tracks. But in this case, it's all just aesthetics, um, really, uh, and so you know what the track diagram looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up now, and then I'll be back. Okay, um, just I'm just finishing up my purple here, touching up the edge, and actually giving it a little second coat to make it a little darker. Why I selected purple, I have no idea. This is going to go to the... Um, to the turntable controls which are actually mounted on the fascia of the layout and uh, they'll also be colored purple or something that tells me where this track goes but um, pretty much uh, the control panel is now complete all I have to do now is put some some uh, switches in and I'll show you what it looks like once all the switches are in I won't have it wired up but in essence, uh, this is what our control panel looks like. And I'll be back uh, for the last segment and show you what it looks like with everything mounted on it. Okay, you can see that I finally finished the panel here. Um, you'll notice that I changed uh, what I had originally painted red around here to orange because I had forgotten that that is a reversing section. And my other reversing section is also in orange, so I made it in orange. 
I also had done these in silver, the tracks, the yard tracks in silver, and I realized that when I tilted the panel up at an angle like this, they didn't appear uh, very well because they blended in with the gray too much. So um, I changed those to yellow. Uh, you can see the red switches will all be block switches, and these flat switches that I showed you before will be the turnout switches for the Kato turnouts. And let's go see what it looks like on the layout. Okay, everybody, here we are in the room. Here's our control panel. Uh, I'm going to turn it over for you here and show you that I've just uh, stuck the sticky back Velcro uh, to the two edges. Uh, this stuff that you see on the back is going to all be removed from these switches, and then I will wire in my Amphenol connector to all these uh, switch machines, and it will go to a block back here. But we'll leave all of that for a different video. This is all in just constructing the panel itself. Um, you can see that it turned out pretty nicely, as you saw in the picture before. I've also added the the uh, the sticky, the real sticky or bristly side of the Velcro to the pan to the uh, layout itself, and I've also put some uh, some staples in it here, as you see, because I found that sometimes it pulls off the wood. It'll stick pretty good to the plexiglass, but it doesn't stick too well to the wood. So as, as long as it's uh, stapled down, it wants to stay there. So let's just take a look and see how it works. This allows you to take it on and off. You can also use several different methods. Um, you could screw this on. Uh, you could put a hinge on it to drop it down. You could do any number of things, but this is, this is just the way I do it. Let's see how it's going to fit here. And that's all there is to it. And I think it turned out pretty nicely. Here's a shot. Um, this is where the turntable is going to be controlled from with the standard Walther's um, turntable uh, control unit uh, for the indexed table. And then I've got some tracks to add in here. A rotary switch will operate which track is energized. And this switch will turn the power on to the purple track that we put on the... Uh, on the diagram here. And that's pretty much uh, how you create or how I create a control panel. Well, that wraps up the control panel build on the Albuquerque Carnwell and Harris Railroad. I'm glad you stopped in for this video and I hope to see you on the next one. In the meantime, everybody have fun building model railroads.